Hey friends, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to carry on with uh, the discussion about uh, table view diffable data source. And as you can see over here, uh, a couple of days ago, I did one video where uh, I covered a single section. I showed you how you know you can convert an existing um, the legacy uh, implementation into one which is using the diffable data source. And I figured out that you know this Diffable Data Source API has to be more powerful to cater for more complex use case. And over here, I want to illustrate that to you because I just built up this very simple POC to show you how you can support um, multi uh, sections. Okay, so before I uh, go into the code, I just want to show you the finished product over here. I'm not really sure what the use case is for, but I want to show you the behavior, and I would like you to to also think about how you can achieve this if you are using the legacy or the uh, the default method of implementing a table view all right so as you can see i'm on this uh, table view controller here i have three products that is inside this section called products all right and when i tap on this okay also notice that i have two other headers supported payments as well as gifts for your purchase so when i tap on the first product notice that i show out a list of the supported payments over here all right so if i tap on xbox i get to animate this um the supported payment section and then it shows uh, what are the payments that are being supported for this particular product all right so if i hit on the uh, on any of these payment methods i will show the gifts for the purchase so bitcoin gets a norton antivirus uh, mac 90 days trial I'm just uh, mocking this for fun, all right? So a Visa and Master as well. So I would like to think about how you can achieve this uh, using the default method, basically using the implementation that you have known to build table view so far. So obviously you're going to be using a lot of reloading, right? Yeah, chances are you need to, you know, figure out which um, which cell, uh, which index path is being tapped on, and then you know reloading on on the particular section and the uh, particular row as well. So I want to show you the power of the diffable um, data source API. Uh, and how uh, this can actually work without having to do all that reloading. All right, so I hope you're ready to get started. So of course, if I hit the reset button, I'm just going to collapse everything. All right, again, this is um, kind of the, be the behavior. All right, so let's uh, walk through the code. So uh, maybe let's first start by looking at the main uh, uh, storyboard. So again, this is just a navigation controller. Uh, that's being hooked up to a table view controller. This is using a uh, UI kit. So inside over here, I have um, three different prototype uh, cells, the product cell, uh, the uh, payment cell, and the gift cell. All right, so uh, the cells are very simple, just an image view, some title, and um, uh, some labels over here. So as you can see, it kind of corresponds to, to this over here. All right, so let's uh, start by uh, the table view controller. So. As you can see, uh, I have the data source over here, so I have to do it this way as compared to the previous video. I'll leave a link somewhere at the top if you want to check out the previous video where it's a much more simpler example. I have to create a class this way that is of type UI table view diffable data source. And uh, that's the reason is because uh, f that's for me to define the title for header and section. All right, so this is how you have to do it. Okay, so uh, as you can see, when I initialize this, uh, this is the default initializer. And uh, this uh, is a very similar signature to the self for row uh, method, all right? And then uh, the title for header and section is just the default one. Okay, so let's see uh, how I structured this. So if you see, this is actually very, very short, all right? Notice that um, uh, line 44 to line uh, 133 is about 100 lines long, but most of them is just uh, mostly just business logic uh, to, to select uh, what gifts to show or what uh, supported payments for the particular product. All right, so this is really hard coded stuff. But if you look at the full logic, it's actually just applying the snapshot. Okay, so I want to walk you through uh, what we have over here so, and, and how I structure the, the, uh, the data source. Okay, so uh, if you can remember in the previous video uh, over here, we have to supply two things inside the diffable data source. The first one is the section. All right, so the section is inside inside the table view controller. I have this over here. So I firstly define what are the sections I want inside my table view, okay? So I have the products. Okay, I, I, I put this in singular product, payment, payment, and gifts, okay? So maybe let me just bring this over here. Okay, so we have the uh, three sections over here. So I put in the section over here. And now this part is what is the model 
to represent each of this item inside the cell okay so currently i put this as row okay so guys before i uh, dwell any further i just want to give credit when credit is due so i kind of like uh i kind of got the um got the tutorial or rather i built this with the help of one um of one uh let me have a look at it uh swift of one article over here so i think uh, i'm not sure where is that is that right now? oh yeah by by uh, ali so i kind of like uh, referred uh this article although I, I although this article is comprehensive but i find that it's a bit messy so uh, there, there are a bunch of screenshots but i, I try to uh, I'll try to explain this in a way whereby you can uh, start building it up yourself by just understanding the concepts uh, in this video, okay? So the row basically represents the item, okay? So this is a row, this is a row, this is a row, and then this is a row as well. But of course, you notice that uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite different um, because, for example, this one has the, uh, has the price, but this one does not have the price. It just has the image name as well as the title. So let's look at the model of what the row is, okay? So if we jump to the definition, this row is actually an enum, all right? So this enum has three different cases. Uh, which correspond to the three different sections so i have a product okay and this product uh, has the associated type which is product model all right so anyway i'll, I'll be making this um this project available on github so you can just play around with it and just mess around and try to understand it if you if you need to okay so let's talk about the product model over here so product model making it really simple we have the image which is the image url string we have the name we have the price making it all simple everything will be string and i just uh, defined three different products over here playstation xbox and nintendo switch and uh, i just specify the image name price and then i put them all together inside this all property all right so we have all of this uh, products inside this um, all property here okay so maybe let's also uh, scroll down so i have the payment model which is this one over here so payment much simpler it has the uh, the image uh, your uh, image url string as well as the name okay so one thing to note is that um the uh the model over here so whatever that you define over here has to conform to hashable all right and that's the reason why all the uh, struts all the models have to be hashable for this to work okay so we are done with the payment models and then finally we have the gif model all right the gif model is this one over here and again very self-explanatory we have the uh, uh, image url string as well as the name i define uh three uh, i define four of uh, this uh, standalone uh, uh, gifs over here okay so we are done with the model so now let's Let's have a look okay so over here inside this um, method over here i'm able to switch through the product and then uh, i with each corresponding uh, sorry not uh, yeah i switch through the product because i'm switching through the item and this item is the row over here and then according to the uh, product i'm returning the corresponding uh, cell okay to correspond with the product and so for example inside product cell i will have to take in a product model so let's jump into the product cell right now so notice that inside the configure method i have to take in the product model and this is uh, how i just uh, set all the um, the images as well as the text into the label so pretty simple stuff over here okay inside the payments here again configure method um, i take in a payment model and then finally inside the gift cell uh, you can sort of guess it's the gift model okay all right, so inside here, this is just defining the title. So um, uh, I have to uh, get what the, uh, based on the sections, all right, so section zero, section one, section two, I have to uh, correspond the sections with the name. Okay, so over here, um, section dot all cases. So this is basically this guy over here. So I'm saying that, hey, if this is a product, all right, so I, I switch to I make this into an array using case literable by calling the all cases and then just returning the corresponding um, the corresponding um, uh, titles over here. Okay, so over here, uh, let's look at the table view controller. So uh, maybe let's first look at this one over here. So let's uh, I create a data source. So uh, in, in the previous video, you notice that uh, I did it this way instead. So uh, uh, data source to you know i did something like ui table view deferable data source i have my section over here and i have my um, row okay so the row is here and then um, the way i did it was return dot init so you realize that this is pretty much the same structure as well table view index path 
an item so this one is basically uh, this one over here okay so now we are just uh, creating the data source uh, as a standalone class by itself and uh, we have to use a uh, lazy uh, init because uh, we need to pass in the data uh, the table view and the table view is only available once the, uh, the table view controller is being initialized okay so we have the data source over here and then over here uh, I, I have the uh, three different properties products payments and gifts and notice that they are all row type okay so row again to refresh your memory as an enum so this is uh, how we do it okay so inside the view did load self dot products what i did was a uh, product model so we have the product model i remember i have the all property so the all, pro all property will consist of all the uh, items here playstation xbox nintendo switch that's why you see them here okay and then over here we have a function called apply snapshot i think in fact i can make this a private function because nowhere else is calling this i believe it should still compile be successful which is great all right so let's see who is calling okay before we, we, we see who is calling apply snapshot let's understand what we have over here okay so as compared to the previous video uh which is much more simpler because we're working with only one single section this time we are working with multi sections okay so we define the snapshot uh over here we have to pass in the section and the row so the signature is very similar or it has to be similar to this one over here the only reason why this has to be table view controller dot section is because this section is inside the scope of table view controller and obviously we don't have to, to add that inside over here because apply snapshot is within table view controller okay so quite self-explanatory all right so what we do over here is that snapshot apply uh, sections we put in the different sections so for example if i add in um, others over here then this is when you can do others as well okay so obviously we don't need that so i'm going to remove this okay and then i have to append the items into each section okay so uh, in, uh with pro, uh, with product i pass in the products and what is the products products is this one over here is of row type payment um, payment gifts gifts and then finally uh, when we kind of reload the table view we just call data source to apply snapshot and then we can pass in uh, this uh you, you know you can pass in this true or false i believe if i pass in false then there's no animation uh, let me just have a quick look it's just going to be very plain old vanilla just uh, snapping out all right so i think uh, true is much nicer okay so over here um, this is how um, the logic of selecting this uh, payments and the gifts are happening so over here what we do is that when the select row happens all right so you know you notice that um, the select row uh, should be a function inside uh, ui table view delegate all right so you notice that uh, the functions over here uh, pertains to ui table view delegate but all the functions that pertain to ui table view data source cannot be inside this uh, this scope it has to be inside this one over here all right and that's the reason why title for header and section has to be here instead of inside of uh, instead of having it being inside the table view controller all right so what we do is that uh, firstly i deselect the row so basically i remove the um the animation or i, I fade out the uh, selection animation and then uh, there's this method uh, from uh, uh, data source where it's called the data source dot item identifier for index path and what this returns to us is actually the item and what is the item the item is actually the row all right so let me to make this uh, more explicit i think i can just do it like that row all right so command b to build i believe this should still be succeeded okay so i'm getting the item so what i'm doing is that i'm going to switch through the items okay and then um, i'm saying that every time i select a product i'm going to uh, remove all the gifts so so you notice over here we have a gift over here but when i let me just put a breakpoint over here when i hit maybe xbox <laughs> am i oh is this happening i don't know why my breakpoint is not happening let me try that again Oh, this is kind of strange okay let me just rerun this one more time okay i believe this should be called uh, products is it loading okay great so so if i hit any of this uh product over here gives will be uh will be set to empty and that's the reason why we will remove everything inside the gift section over here all right so if i have netflix and i put the breakpoint here i hit uh nintendo switch is going to set this to uh, empty array and that's the reason why gifts will be removed from the snapshot basically okay so I, I i switch through the different products so if it's nintendo 
then I'm going to say uh, that oh, I'm going to say I'm going to set the payment uh, methods as Bitcoin, Visa, and Master. All right. So if I hit on Nintendo, Bitcoin, uh, Visa, and Master. All right. So this is under this um, switch statement, uh, case product. Okay. So you notice that I have also another uh, switch statement over here, which is case. Uh, payment so depending on the payments so if it's PayPal then or master then I'm going to send I'm going to set the gifts as Netflix all right so let's assume I have master over here uh, I believe I put a breakpoint over here you should probably if I hit on uh, master all right so the breakpoint is here I'm going to set the gifts as Netflix and therefore that's the reason why uh, so at the end of the um, of the switch case I'm finally calling the apply snapshot method all right so let me put a breakpoint here if I hit the continue button I get here and then when I hit this one more time I'm going to see the new gifts being shown up over here all right the Netflix over here so um, you can kind of check out uh, I mean this 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 logic here is not very interesting it's just basically making it look interesting that you know we have a different um, options every time uh, something is being tapped on but the whole idea is that you don't have to uh, be locate the particular uh, row or sections to reload uh, everything happens when you just fire the apply snapshot itself okay so finally uh, when I tap on the reset button what I'm doing is that um, obviously I'm going to keep the products so what I'm going to do is to set the payments to be an empty array uh, gifts to be an empty array and I just call the apply snapshot method so again if I hit on reset and put a breakpoint here I'm going to reach this point over here run this okay I think I'll hide for a row I think uh, I'm not sure whether this will still work if I comment this out so let me just do a quick try yeah I think it's uh, oh it's, it's, it's looking fine okay all right so it looks like I don't need this okay I think uh, that's all I have for you inside the table view controller let's see if there's anything else worth looking at I think probably that's really all Okay, and, and what I really wanted to, to really share with you um, is just how easy it, it is to work with the snapshot as compared to having to be, um, you know, uh, performing manual um, uh, reloading. And of course, with uh, manual reloading, you always run into a, a problem where, you know, you select the wrong, you have to do some kind of auto calculation. And if you select the wrong array, you know, you get, you, you, you can potentially get a crash, all right? Um, yep. Yeah. Alright guys, I think uh, that's pretty much all. I hope that uh, this has been helpful and uh, again, I'll make this uh, project available on, on, uh, on GitHub. I'll leave a link inside the comment. Feel free to check it out. And uh, that's all I have for you. I'll see you in the next one. Alright, cheers. Bye.